Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. This is going to be part one of an office renovation. Uh, we're taking this extra bedroom in my house and we're going to try to turn it into a workspace for me and my wife. Uh, currently, with all the coronavirus stuff going on right now, I'm, I have the ability to work from home. So I've kind of made this makeshift setup in here to accommodate for that in the meantime. And uh, the wife's got a couple things on, on the horizon, you know, she's wanting to get into some crafts and, and stuff like that. And she'd like to have her own area to, to set up and, and do those things. And, you know, uh, for me, uh, just starting out the, the YouTube channel. So I'd like to have a, a space to work and, and sit down and edit some videos or, uh, just kind of be able to play and, and have a much nicer area to work. Uh, currently it, the bedroom is set up set up like this we got this uh, this you know blue carpet here on the ground and uh, some more blue wallpaper here here on the walls um, and you can see behind me here the the current office or I guess you'd say desk or, or folding table setup that we have um, in the corner here just kind of got this monitor set up so that I can run two screens off my laptop for work. And then uh, right here, got the big screen running off of the the tower here for the, you know, kind of just the cheap, cheap built computer that I had put together, which if you guys want to know a little bit more about that, I'm sure we could touch a little bit on that later on in, in, a, in another video. Um, but what we're looking to do here in part one is just to rip up this carpet and then, uh, you know, get the get the subfloor laid down or the the cushioning laid down. We're gonna lay down some laminate here in this room just to for when we get some office chairs, we can roll around a little easier and just have a much nicer looking looking area. Um, uh, later on, I'll probably go and do do the walls, paint the walls. I am gonna make a a desk in a later episode that uh we'll, we'll be we'll be showing right in this area. So if the, if you guys like what you're seeing, uh, hit the thumbs up button. If, if you dislike what you're seeing, hit the thumbs down. Uh, leave comments in, uh, down below on if you guys like the content or if there's something you would like to see from the channel. Um, you know, hit the subscribe button, the notifications. Um, what, what we're looking to do here is not necessarily a, a DIY to show you how everything's done. Um, it's kind of just going to be more or less bringing you guys along with me and to kind of um, just just for entertainment to show you guys, you know, what it is I do. I, I, I think I do a lot of fun things that I enjoy watching on YouTube that uh, I would love to document and, and bring you guys along for. Um, so if you guys like what you see, let me know. So to start removing this carpet, I want to start at this seam here at the edge, not because that's necessarily how it's supposed to go, but I just want to make sure that this line right here transitioning over to this other piece of carpet stays, you know, nice and, and intact. So I'm just going to 
cut a seam here. Try to get your hands underneath there. And I'm gonna cut along this seam. It looks like it's kind of attached. see over here the carbo just starts to pull up real nice off of these tack strips real, real nice and easy so I'm gonna start getting the rest of this pulled up and then once we get about halfway through I'm gonna stop and cut the carpet in half so that just to make it easier to to haul out of here. So what we're going to do now is get this old carpet out of here and we're going to start pulling up all this blue cushioning, get it out of there and then start working on all these tack strips right here along the edge and then uh, get those hauled out of there, get the floor cleaned up and then, uh, you know, probably going to get into this closet after that, clean it out because there's a... There's a decent amount of stuff in there that needs needs to find a home. So once we find a home for that, get that carpet up, get the blue padding out of there, that tack strips, all that, and then we'll we'll come in and um, do the uh, the underlayment for the laminate, and then uh, start. Then the hard part starts start knocking down all these uh, all these planks. All right, stay tuned. One thing I almost forgot to mention is when you're pulling up these this padding, these are held down by uh, all these little staples that you can see right here. So you're going to want to wear some gloves to make sure that these don't come out and bite you. So I went ahead and found me a proper pair of gloves here and was looking back at some of the other footage. I was thinking to myself, you know, geez, that guy sure does have a lot of plumber's crack. And uh, never really did figure me working was ever going to turn into a spectator sport. So, you know, I might have to brush up on some of my fashion, you know, to, to make this a little bit more appealing for you guys.
curious. I'm gonna use the these pair of pliers here. You know these things where you, you slip up and you're trying to get a lot of grip. You go ahead and bite your right in the hand. Use them and pull up the staples from the floor. And then, uh, pull up the tack strips. And then go ahead and use this sledgehammer here. You can use a claw foot hammer. You know, one of the little tiny ones, but I like this this big one better. And then uh, use this here pry bar to go ahead and get the tack strips up themselves. And then uh, you're going to be seeing this blue stuff in this video for the rest of the night here. Uh, it's blowing like crazy. The wind is out there, so I gotta find something to put that in before I before I take it on out of here. So.
So as you guys saw earlier, hinted on earlier on in the video, part one of the, the plan has changed. Instead of just going straight into laying the floor down, we're gonna go ahead and uh, you can see right here, got my paint pan, trash can bag over there, make it a little bit easier to clean up. We're gonna go ahead and try to paint these walls up while, while we can before we put the floor down. We weren't sure if we were gonna bite the bullet and buy the paint, but figured just save ourselves some time uh, and effort by doing it right here at this step. So uh, a little bit later on in the day, so you can see we've got what I affectionately call my light cannon here in the corner. Hopefully that'll kind of brighten things up a little bit easier, make it look a little better as we move around the room here to paint. Um, went ahead and took off the uh, outlet covers. Mine just snap off, kind of like this. You get your fingers under them. Mine just pop off. They got these little tabs on the back, which I just broke one. You know, plastic is my favorite thing ever. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and start on this side of the wall. I went ahead and just bought one gallon of paint so that we can make sure that it's a color we like. We're shooting for a lighter gray. Um, and, and with our experiences in the past, lighter grays sometimes come out looking blue. We really don't want that. So I'm hoping this color we picked up from Ace is gonna come out a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and get these off the wall real quick. Take care of some of these little things here. Um, some stuff from the previous owner. We get that off and then we'll start painting these walls up. see here this is one roller worth of paint just the first roller and I'm actually really happy with the coverage that it did sorry about the shadow from the the light cannon over there but uh you can see it actually did a, pr a pretty decent job not really having too many holes it kind of looks I don't know if you can see that on camera but it looks a little lighter in the paint uh, pan there and the color here that Benjamin Moore at Ace, I know that sticker says true value but they're switching over is gray horse is what it's called you can kind of if it'll focus you can kind of see it right there so well I just want to point out give you guys kind of a first look at the paint job probably move over to this wall here
So this is one paint pan worth of paint on the wall here. And I'm actually really happy with the coverage that this uh, Benjamin Moore paint did with just uh, the one pan. I'm used to using like the Bayer, you know, uh, Home Depot's paint, whether it's the, the top level or the mid level. And the top level Bayer, I, I do absolutely love. It reminds me a lot of this where it's kind of one coat and you get almost done looking results essentially. The medium paint for Bayer um, is not the same story. Kind of got to go over maybe twice to get the full coverage look that we're going for here. But I think what makes me you know, happy about this being one pan worth of paint is, you know, you can see right down here, I don't know if you can see the level, but we're about one fifth into that can of paint. So, you know, I was gonna buy uh, two, two gallons of paint, you know, even potentially five gallons of paint, thinking that's how much we were gonna need. Um, and I, I, I'm not gonna count my eggs yet, um, but, or I guess count my chickens, <laughs> however the reference goes. You know, hopefully I can get this whole room done with just this one gallon of paint and I'll be totally converted over this Benjamin Moore paint. And uh, you know, this whole, you know, I thought this uh, trash bag over the paint pan thing would be a, an ideal, a novel idea that was gonna work. That about worked not at all, so you know, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's different ways you can do that thing, but I'm just going to take it off for now with the, it's not really worth the hassle that I'm going to save by the freaking $2 uh, paint pan. So get that thing off of there and then start tackling the rest of these walls over here.
So what happened here is this uh, HDX brand pole snapped right there at the threads. So you know, I, I didn't go out and buy this. I don't know where you find these. It just came with this house. So, you know, to save the old lower back and the, the knees, I just gently thread that back in there. Hopefully don't snap it off. Oh, and you can kind of see it's, it's pretty wobbly. But uh, I'm gonna take some good old Gorilla Tape. We're gonna hopefully fix this sucker on up here. You know, let's see if this stuff is, sure is pretty darn sticky. Get that first layer on there real nice. Hopefully don't break it while doing this. Couple thousand wraps around there. Hopefully, get it to stick on there real nice. Sure that'll still break off, but we'll call it good right there. You know, see how wobbly she yeah, she's still pretty wobbly. We'll give it a little more support up here. Right up and through here. Bring that on back down. Real sharp leg. I'm sure I could have thrown like a or something in there, but I guess we'll just put this Gorilla Tape to the test. Let's see how that is.
All right, so finally got wrapped up with the paint here. As you can see, hopefully see the finish came out really nice and, and clear. Uh, super happy with this one gallon of Benjamin Moore paint that we had bought. It, we pretty much did almost three layers around this room. Uh, went far farther than I expected. So um, if, if it made any sense at all, I'd probably name this, this video Benjamin Moore is the best paint I've ever used, but that just doesn't really fit in with what we got going on here. So I'm um, going to come back and touch up on some of the trim pieces, but uh, I think this is where we're going to wrap up part one, finishing up with the paint on the walls. And then in part two, we're going to start um, laying down the pattern for the floor, um, get this stuff cleaned up beforehand, obviously, but start laying down the underlayment and start trying to knock out the floor. So um, stay tuned for part two. If you like what you saw in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and always send a comment. I'll try to get through those as best I can. Um, thanks.